Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of May, for the formation of religious and seminarians. We pray that religious women and men and seminarians grow in their own vocations through their human, pastoral, spiritual and community formation, leading them to be credible witnesses to the Gospel. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we begin this day, let us begin by spending time with the Lord. As we have decided to welcome this day in the presence of the Lord, let us begin by thanking Him for all that He has done for us, all the blessings that he has bestowed on us and most importantly for all the graces for all the favors that he has given us right from our birth till now on many occasions we see that because we are caught up with so many other activities because of our busy schedule we don't pay attention to these small details that are there in our lives very often, these graces, these blessings, which are so important in our lives, are kept aside. And therefore, today, as we begin today's morning prayer, we ask the Lord to give us the grace so that we may be able to appreciate the good things that He has done for us. And therefore, it is appropriate that we begin today's prayer by thanking the Lord for all that He has done for us. First and foremost, we thank the Lord for the gift of life, for giving us talents, abilities and various opportunities in our lives. We also thank the Lord for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones and all those who play a very important role in our lives. Now we see that there are so many people who have been instrumental in our lives in so many ways. These people have dedicated their time and effort and thus they have shaped and helped us become who we are. And therefore we thank the Lord for their presence in our lives and we also ask the Lord to bless them so that they may be able to have the fullness of life. We also thank the Lord for the gift of this day. 
yet another day that we have been given to make good use of our talents, of our abilities and more importantly to make a difference not only in our lives but also in the lives of those around us. We also thank the Lord for the various opportunities that he has given us. Opportunities to put our talents, to put our abilities to use and at the same time opportunities to help others make a difference in their lives. Lord, we also want to thank you for all the experiences that you have given us. Some of these experiences may be really good. We may want to cherish these experiences. But there may be other experiences which may be bitter, which may be harsh. Nonetheless, these bitter experiences may have taught us a lot in life. These are the experiences that have made us stronger. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for giving us these experiences, for making us better individuals, for making us stronger, and thus for preparing us to face the challenges in life. And therefore, my dear friends, as we participate in this morning prayer, let us ask the Lord for this grace that we may be able to radiate his presence to the world around us, that we may be able to become messengers of peace, joy and love, spreading his message of goodness, spreading his message of peace and love to the world around us. And therefore, let us ask the Lord to accompany us in whatever we do today, so that every action, every word may radiate his love, peace and joy. My dear friends, let us now reflect and meditate on Psalm 59. As usual, we shall take a look at the general overview of the psalm and then we shall take a look at the psalm in detail. Now, when we look at Psalm 59, we see that the psalm is a psalm of lament that is attributed to David. And this was probably written during a time when Saul had sent men to watch David's house in order to kill him. And therefore, the psalm can be divided into four main sections. First, we see that a plea for deliverance from enemies. David's plea to be delivered from his enemies, which we will find in verses 1 to 5. In the second part, we see a description of wickedness and violence of the enemies. And this we can see in verses 6 to 7. Then in verses 8 to 10, we have a declaration of trust in God's protection. And finally, in verses 11 to 17, we see a song of praise and confidence of God's deliverance. Confidence that God will deliver him from all his enemies. And therefore, overall, when we take a look at the psalm, we see that Psalm 59 will reflect David's plea for deliverance from his enemies and his trust in God's protection. The psalm also acknowledges the wickedness and violence of the enemies and at the same time it will also emphasize the faithfulness and the strength of God. Now the psalm serves as a reminder of the importance of seeking refuge in God during the time of trouble and therefore expressing trust that God will deliver his people from all difficulties in life. And therefore the, song, the psalm will conclude with a song of praise, highlighting the confidence and gratitude that come from placing one's trust and faith in the Lord. Now, when you take a look at the psalm in detail, we see that in the first section of the psalm, David pleads for deliverance from his enemies and therefore he implores God to deliver him from those who seek his life. Here we see that David will use vivid imagery in order to describe the intensity of the threat that he faces. Now David will portray his enemies as fierce dogs who howl and prowl around the city. As we have already seen that 
The background of this psalm is how Saul sends his men in order to watch over David. And therefore, probably here we can see that the fear or the anger, the grief, the sorrow that is probably there in David. And this is what prevents him in, in order to live a fulfilled life because he's already been watched, he's always being surrounded. And therefore, he uses very strong language crude language in other words giving examples like fierce dogs who are ready to attack him at any time and at the same time we see that David will also express his innocence and his trust in God's protection and in this way he also pleads to God for God's intervention. Now when we look at today's world we also see that it's not very easy in order to practice one's own beliefs etc and there may be various factors for this sometimes we ourselves could feel as if we are being watched as if we are being tormented by others and in those moments we can have confidence in the Lord that just as David was able to face and put his trust in the Lord he was able to face his enemies and thus he was fully confident that the Lord would be there, guide him and protect him. This is the level of confidence, this is the level of trust that all of us are called to have. Now, in the second section of the psalm, we see that David describes the wickedness and violence of his enemies. Now, David portrays them as arrogant and insolent speaking lies and cursing with their mouths and therefore David laments that their deceitful and malicious actions are in a way emphasizing their own violent nature and David also says that the actions of the wicked are in a way demonstrating their lack of fear or regard for God. Therefore, these are the people who basically feel that they are their own masters, that they don't require anybody else. They don't fear the Lord. And therefore, we see that David, in a way, describes their wickedness, describes their malicious intent. Now, moving on to the third section of the psalm, we see that David declares his trust in God's protection. He affirms that God is his strength and his fortress that God is a refuge in times of trouble and it is here we see that David expresses his confidence that God will go before him and he will comfort his himself God will comfort David by confronting his enemies and it is here we see that David acknowledges that God is his defense and that God's steadfast love will meet him in the morning so much faith and trust David has in the Lord. And in the final section, we see that David offers a song of praise and confidence in God's deliverance. David expresses his faith in God's power and he also declares that he will sing of God's strength and mercy. In other words, David says that he will praise the Lord for all that the Lord has done for him. Now David acknowledges that God is his refuge and his stronghold and he praises God for his faithfulness and deliverance. He affirms that he will trust in God and he will give thanks to him. And therefore, my dear friends, as we reflect on this psalm, we see that we can also apply it to our daily life situations. When we too are overwhelmed, when there is a lot of fear, when we are filled with grief, when we feel that we are being watched over. Let this psalm help us. Let this psalm console us. Let this psalm help us to place our faith and trust in the Lord, especially during those difficult moments. And therefore, my dear friends, as we have reflected and meditated on this psalm, let us now close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has cleansed us from our sin. He has taken away all our sins and he has given us a new life. Lord, we thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. And therefore, Lord, we ask you to bless us and protect us at every step of the way. Be our guiding force. Be there to always show us the way. And for all this, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. You have protected us and you have guarded us through the night. You have given us this time to spend with you. You have woken us up this morning and you have given us good health of mind and body. And for all this, Lord, for your love, for your mercy, for your generosity, we thank you and we praise you, Lord. You are a merciful God. You have blessed us in so many ways. As you reflect on our blessings, as you reflect on all the good things that have happened to us, as we reflect on our experiences, Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you for making us better individuals. And now, my dear friends, let us spend a few moments in silence and let us reflect on the psalm. Let us see what touched us. Could be a word, could be a phrase, or could be a sentence or a thought. Remain with that and allow the psalm to take root in you so that ultimately your words, your actions will radiate the love, peace and joy of Christ to the world around. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly hosts by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, 
and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.